all this in service of this is not our sequencer. Let's make our sequencer now, though. Let's put in a macro, because that's what we do when we're clever. Sequencer. Bank. Let's go inside. Built-in module. Sequencer. Eh. Doesn't really matter what we start with here. Let's do an eight step, just in the interest of time. Okay. Let's make some outputs. This out. I'm just going to run to the out. This is going to be the value of that sequencer. And then let's run this gate to an out too. Out. Pink. For today, let's take this GA and let's make a constant. So what this means is when a gate is triggered, when this G is triggered by the sequencer, it triggers it as this value, which is just one. So our low pass gate honestly doesn't care. We have a control here that we can mess with instead. So let's leave that be. So now you can see we've got a whole bunch of values, step one, step two, th step three, etc. And then we need a clock. We'll set aside reset for the moment, but let's create controls for all of these. Create control, create control, create control, create control. All right, let's clean this up. I'm sure I'll fast motion this in the edit. Okay, and so now these are the values that will be output at each step of the sequence. Just to make this interesting, let's go built-in module, panel, numeric readout. And I'm going to wire this into the step. And then I'm going to clean that up on the panel. So this will tell me now which of those steps that I'm on. So I could see that at any given time and make sure that it's working. Just for fun, I'm going to turn off the show label on that. So it's just, we see the step on the sequencer. All right, and then the only thing we're missing is a clock. Now, those of you who do analog synthesis know that the traditional way to do a clock would be with an LFO. So let's do it. LFO. We'll create a control. We'll get back and we'll make these nicer. I created a control for the frequency, for the amplitude, the depth. Let's just create a constant of one. And then let's run our pulse into the clock there. Okay. Now, you might already see... I'm going to move this frequency. You might already see that our sequencer is a going. See, it's counting through the steps. Now, if I turn the frequency up, counts those steps faster, turn it down. All right, that's all we need for our sequencer. We'll do some interesting things in just a second, but now we just need this running out. I should rename this out to be G to match that. So now, instead of our keyboard controls, see you later. Let's run our out into the pitch here and our gate into our low pass gate. Now, currently, this is a pretty silly sequence. And there we go. Now, this is our step one in making a our silly sequencer. Let me just do a couple things and then maybe I'll conclude the first video. But it's working, right? Now, I might think more carefully. 36 is a C. 34 would be the B flat underneath that. 36. Have it jump up an octave to 48. And then what? 96. And then back down to 46, 45, and then what? 36, 39. So I'm just made them sort of pentatonic scale. Well, kind of. I don't know, Dorian. And so now I've made that. Okay, anyway, let's go to our sequencer. Let's add now a W control. Okay? So now keep in mind that this is the pulse width. It's the amount of time that it's on versus it's off. So, right? Increasing the on time. Good. 
could be a very cool thing to control in real time. All right. It's not going to be an exciting thing until we get ourselves a little bit of a delay. I'm going to do this very simply and quickly. I have another video about making a tape delay. You can go check that out. I'm not really going to talk through this. I'm just going to do it. Bink. Again, I'm making this pretty quick and dirty. If I were being a bit more serious, I might make some nicer controls on that. All right, you're probably getting tired of that, but here it'll get it'll get neater in just a second. Uh, I'm gonna turn down that feedback before I blow it all up. That was sloppy. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. Oops, that's silly of me. Part of the wrong thing. Stop that for a second, you're probably getting tired of it. Okay, so now I have all these steps that I can set to different values, which will be the different pitches. I can control the speed of my sequence over this frequency control. You can see what step is happening, so you can check to make sure that it's working, that, that it's running. And then I can set the pulse width here too. Basically, no break between notes. Super staccato. I don't like how it's not clear what this is. There we go. Now, if I move these willy nilly, I might get a little bit more wild sounds. Nice little bit of ambient music now. I'm going to leave it there for part one here. There's lots more we can do. Sequencers are going to get more interesting when we run multiple sequencers at the same time. We can also make this a tempo sync. And so rather than just having this LFO, we can sync that LFO to the tempo, and then we can run it within logic. So let's plan on doing that next time. And then while we're at it, why don't we make this delay also tempo synced? But again, just for simple sequencing, let's leave it here for now and uh, let me know what you come up with.